My name is John Schleicher from the Guggen Library of Medicine at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, and we're very pleased to be here today with Mrs. Virginia Grissom, uh, wife of longtime faculty member Dr. Robert Grissom in internal medicine. And we're going to have Virginia, we're going to ask Virginia some questions about her life and her history with the medical center and what happened over the years of living in Omaha. So tell me a little bit about um, your background, where you grew up, where you went to school, your parents, some of that general information. I grew up in Springfield, Massachusetts. And uh, <coughs> uh, let's see, that was in 1919. And uh, uh, then I went to, <coughs> I didn't have enough money to go to college. It was hard times right mm -hmm. then. And luckily, the city of Springfield ran a one-year college program, so I did that. And then I had saved up enough money and enough uh, uh, different ways to earn money to go to Mount Holyoke College in South Adley, Massachusetts, which is where I had always wanted to go. <clears throat> so I went to South Adley and uh, it was still kind of hard. I did all kinds of things to make money. I tutored and I made, I sewed hems and I babysat, all sorts of things to make money to get going, you know, so I could keep going. But I did get along and I <clears throat> finished uh, college there. And I wanted to go to graduate school in mathematics and so, I applied to several places, but I went to the University of Wisconsin because they would pay me the most. <laughs> so I got on a train, never having been west of the Hudson River. Oh my gosh. And I woke up in Indiana and I looked out the window and I thought, my Lord, what am I getting into this flat, sandy stuff? Well, luckily it turned out Madison was a lot better. And uh, I got across Chicago and got to Madison. <clears throat> and I found a place to live. And I found uh, they had a lot of, because students were kind of poor, they had a lot of cooperatives. And so, uh, well, I found a, a room in a rooming house. And I joined an eating cooperative. And uh, we had uh, lunch and dinner there and you help prepare or clean up or do something. And I also belong to a breakfast co-op, a different one, <laughs> all this to save money. And I got along just fine, and I was working <clears throat> on my master's degree, and I got that in um, mathematics. And then I was working um, up in what was called the Agricultural Statistical Service. The man who ran it had just lost his uh, right-hand lady, and so he decided he'd hire me. So I started working in the Agricultural Statistical Service. And the most important thing we did, I think, was helping to develop hybrid corn. We would tell farmers with big fields how to divide up their fields into squares, and we would tell them how to plant different seeds in different places. And then at harvest time, <clears throat> they would send us the results of what they got from different squares, big squares in their big fields. And because there were no computers then, it would take me from harvest to Christmas vacation to analyze that. No computers, you know, and I had to do it on a calculator. And because you can make mistakes, I had to do it in one direction and then do it back in the other direction to make sure it was right because it really mattered, you know. So that's what I did uh, there. And uh, so I met 
met Bob in Madison. Oh, okay. That was going to be my next question. And you were going to work on your PhD, or you'd started working yeah, on your I started PhD working on in PhD mathematics. And uh, there were these fellows out at Truax Field, which is outside Madison, and they had no way to meet girls, nice girls. And so <clears throat> the uh, wife of the minister at the university church where I attended and was active was sorry for him, and so she invited them to dinner and she invited a bunch of us to dinner too well she didn't have to prepare it because at that church they had some young men who lived there who got their board there, I mean their rooms there by doing things cleaning and providing meals on some occasions, so that's what happened. What year did you meet each other? And that was about, uh, well, I don't know, about 1942, maybe. Okay. Some one During or two war, really long in yeah. there. And so um, I met Bob there that night, and uh, you know, we all met a bunch of fellows there, and. Uh, so then, shortly after that, he called me, invited me to a dinner dance at the officers' club. I thought that was pretty neat. And so we went, and unfortunately, he got called in to give an anesthetic for an appendectomy. The uh, Army had trained him to be an anesthesiologist in Philadelphia earlier. So I went, I, there was no time to take me home, you know. So I went along and I stood on a box behind the surgeon and watched the appendectomy. Well, Bob thought that was kind of neat, I guess. So he did keep calling me. And one of the things we did, we both enjoyed a lot. I had a bicycle and he got a hold of one. And Madison is built on a strip of land between two lakes, Mendota and Monona. And there are a lot of nice roads that go around Mendota. And so we would take our bicycles and ride around and, you know, we'd stop and rest and lie on the grass bank and rest and talk. And so we kind of began to get pretty serious about doing something, you know. Well, then uh, he got transferred to San Antonio, Texas, oh, he was which was Army a big, what? Army, Army? Air Corps. Oh, Army Air Corps. Okay. Yeah, and he was a doctor, you see, right. already. Already, yep. And so uh, <clears throat> that was bad. But luckily, I had some friends in Madison, and the man, the, the husband in the pair, worked for Hercules Powder Company, and so he could get tickets, ah. you know, that I couldn't get. You couldn't get train tickets, and certainly not plane tickets. Right. And so he would get me tickets, and he got me a ticket to go to San Antonio to visit, which I did, and we decided to get married when we were down there. Well, Bob got transferred then to a survival course in, uh, <clears throat> back in, uh, on the East Coast in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Orville Hand got me tickets to go down there and I packed up all my belongings and went to Orlando. But I got stopped in Jacksonville because there was a hurricane. I mean, everything happened to us. But I finally got there, and we decided to get married there. And so um, the day of the wedding, Bob was eating seaweed out on the coast, and he had to thumb a ride on a truck to get back in time for the wedding. But we made it, <laughs> and we got married there and went to what was it for dinner that night to which was a very fancy hotel and the Orange Court Hotel, which ex exists no more, I guess, but uh, it was really lovely then. And we had a good time there with the, uh, you know, with our, the man and woman who were our attendants. 
And then um, uh, <clears throat> we were going to leave Orlando and go visit my parents and his, but Bob had been uh, being very fussy and putting stuff under his arms so he wouldn't smell, and he got boils. Oh. And, <clears throat> And they were awful, so we couldn't go. He ended up in the hospital, and you know how they treated it? They had penicillin then, just had penicillin, but not to be taken by mouth. Or so. so they put it in a hypodermic needle and shot it straight into the, the boils. Ooh, <laughs> it was awful, I guess. But he did get better. So then we finally started out and went and visited my parents in Massachusetts and his in Illinois, Decatur, Illinois. And then we went down to Biloxi, Mississippi, <coughs> which was where he was sent next. Well, Biloxi's kind of the pits too. And all along the Ghost Co Gulf Coast there, there were so many servicemen in, you know, in different things that it, it was really not very nice, but uh, all the way from over to Gulfport. And um, it was terribly hot, and it was summer, I remember. I used to take a bus into the uh, base at, and, and sit in front of a fan to get cool, no air conditioning. And um, so then we got transferred from summer in Biloxi to going to be fall in Great Falls, Montana. Oh. So we drove to Great Falls. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we had, you couldn't get cars much at all, but we got a hold of an old Dodge, an old green Dodge, I, because we were, you know, needing uh, for that. So we went, and uh, <clears throat> I remember it broke down in Rock Springs, Wyoming, which also is the pits. And so we got a motel just outside town and walked in to keep checking on the car, and um, <clears throat> I didn't, we didn't have any money, much to pay for it, and they wouldn't accept a check. So we went to the bank, and the bank president said, I'll take your check. <laughs> From a serviceman, they should trust him, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we got our car finally and drove on to Great Falls and got there three weeks before our first child was born there. And uh, <clears throat> it, it snowed that day in Great Falls, I remember. <laughs> And Bob was asleep when she was born. He was so tired waiting. <laughs> but so uh, had, had either set of your parents met the other one? No. Before you got married? No. Oh no. It wasn't until after you got married. No, so. no. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, we were in Great Falls then for the winter, and uh, it was a nice winter because the Chinook winds come in and bring warm weather and. I used to put the baby in a basket and put her on the front steps to sleep on these nice days, yeah. So tell us a little bit about Bob's background, where he grew up, well, where he, he was from. Well, he grew up in Decatur, Illinois, where his parents were, and his father was a dentist there. And um, that's partly the reason we met in Madison, because they, uh, his, um, <clears throat> father knew somebody who knew the minister's wife, and so that's how we happened to meet there. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, he grew up in Decatur, Illinois, with his father, a dentist, and uh, <clears throat> that's about all I really know about his, uh, you know, his journey. He had a brother. And uh, that's all, uh, no, no sisters, so. And did he start to college there? I saw Millican, is it Millican yes, University? Yes, Millican University okay. is where he went. And uh, I think he got, uh, 
he went three years, and then um, he got he went to Chicago to get his uh, medical degree, mm -hmm. and uh, they gave him credit for four years at Millican. I don't know whether he took extra or not, but you know it was time when they needed people badly so in medicine and dentistry. So he went uh, to Chicago and lived with his brother and uh, <coughs> they lived on cereal, I think. They didn't have any money much. And so um, uh, shredded wheat. wheat. <laughs> and uh, so uh, so back to Great Falls, then where did you go after that? Well, from Great Falls we went to, uh, <clears throat> he got separated from the uh, Air, Force, Air Corps and we went to Boston for a retread course for doctors. And that was fun. And our first daughter learned to walk in Harvard Yard, as a matter of fact. And uh, so, so was that after the war had ended then? Yes. 45 or 46? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She was born in 45. Okay. We were married in 44 and she was married, born in 45. And uh, <coughs> so uh, then we uh, were looking for a place to, uh, he was looking for a place to practice. And we went, found a place in Michigan City, Indiana that was interesting. And it was in a big old house. And it was uh, the Gardner clin Clinic, it was called. And the, the, the gardeners were a surgeon and an OBGYN. And they had already one internist. And they hired Bob to be the other, but they were going to pay him a salary until whether they decide until they decided he was okay and they made him a partner. So we moved there and bought a house and uh, had our second child and uh, it, it was a real nice place and we thought we'd probably stay there. What year was that when you moved there? I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, we uh, <clears throat> We uh, liked it and we thought we'd stay and so they said, well, we'll make you a partner then, but you have to know that we're cheating on income tax. And they thought that was fair because they went off to the war and didn't make a lot of money and the doctors who stayed home made a lot of money. So they thought that was all right, but Bob didn't. So he said, no, thank you, and we left. And he had been spending an afternoon every week at, in Chicago at the medical center. And so uh, that's where we went. And uh, so we bought a house as a, out uh, on, in River Forest, which is a fancy neighborhood, but we were on the wrong side of the tracks which was Washington Boulevard. So we had a big old, not big, a pretty good size old frame house there. And uh, Bob went in on the, uh, off, uh, usually on the train to uh, the hospital and... Uh, was it located right downtown then in Chicago or...? No, it's at uh, part way out. Okay. And, uh, that was pretty nice and well then they were looking here for someone to come they they had been told at the medical center here that they had to hire full-time people in the four major departments or they were going to lose their accreditation and uh, we were lucky that we were happened to be the first they found and they chose Bob because he had been doing cardiac catheterizations in Chicago at Press Hospital and uh, they wanted to start a cath lab here. So we came in uh, 1953. Okay, and that was at Presbyterian Hospital in Chicago? Yeah. Press, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, so that's how we got here. Okay. <laughs> that, 
goes on from there. <laughs> At that time, there were several um, of the first full-time clinical faculty. Yeah, including Gibbs, Jim Musselman, Jim Musselman, and tell, tell, tell me a little bit about those those guys. Oh, Jim Musselman got to be. They were our best friends. The, he was the surgeon, mm -hmm. and Roy Holly was the obstetrician, and Gordon Gibbs was the pediatrician, and Bob was the internist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all good friends and had, uh, you know, used to have picnics together and dinners together and so forth. It was, it really was nice, yeah. What are your memories, if you can remember, of meeting the, some of the volunteer faculty who were already here and their wives, some of the physicians yeah, from town? Yeah, well, most of them were really friendly because they were, uh, you know, they were pretty much overworked mm -hmm. anyway in their own, um, uh, in their own practices. practices, and I don't think they minded at all. Mm -hmm. no, we didn't take anything from them. So, That's what I wondered, how you might have been received by... No, it, it was fine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what about the, um, when um, Dr. Grissom became chair of the department then in 1956? Yeah, well, they had to make sure chair. it was going to work, yeah, you know, right. and he was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And his first office, I remember, was in Conklin Hall, Conklin Hall. Mm -hmm. yeah, across the road from the hospital. Right. Yeah, I remember that. What are your memories of seeing the campus then at the medical center? Well, you know, it stopped at the back of the old hospital, and it was just dirt from there down to what was Nebraska Psychiatric Institute, which isn't there anymore. Right. You know, they tore that down finally, too, so it was just dirt down there with the dirt road behind the hospital. Okay. Did they have a parking lot back there? Or? Not Probably really. Probably not very good parking even like today. No, there wasn't <laughs> any good parking. You know. <laughs> uh, um, and Bob and Jim Musselman used to ride down together because they lived just a little ways east of us. Okay, where'd you live when you first came to town? But we lived at where fifty five twenty one oh, Harney yeah. so Street. Yeah. Right okay. yeah, we did. <clears throat> and but the Muslims were on the way and were our best friends, so he used to pick Jim up or Jim would come and pick him up. <clears throat> Trouble was they sometimes couldn't remember which car they had and where they left it. <laughs> oh, they were really clutches. <laughs> 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 but, you know, they were really good years, and we ended up with four children, three girls and a boy, Nancy, Carol, Leslie, and finally a boy, Tim. And, uh, and you have two physicians among those four, well, is that right? Uh, yeah, uh, Leslie and Tim are, <clears throat> so... And what area of work do your other children, what do they do, your other two girls? Well, Nancy, uh, uh, she started out working in computers when they came in. But uh, she ended up, in, and she took a year off and traveled finally because she was making too much money and was, you know, and so she came back. She went into real estate because she likes people and houses. Mm -hmm. And she's retired, but she's still selling houses and buying houses and doing all this stuff. You know, she's retired, but not retired. Right. And uh, Kind of like a lot of doctors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Carol it was a... Um, she's a conservator? She yeah, a conservator. conservator. Right. So she takes care of a lot of artworks, is that oh, right? Yeah. Sculpture and yeah. paintings and... Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the most exciting thing she ever did was uh, they found some, well, in Amman, Jordan, they found some uh, bones of figures in some, when they were building a road. So what they did was take something and dig under this great big piece of soil 
I mean like 10 feet by 6 feet, and ship it to her lab. And then she and the people who worked for her took it apart carefully, very carefully, and managed to put together several figures. They, um, you know, they couldn't find all the pieces, but they could get enough to fill. Mm -hmm. Well, they were funny looking figures, no heads and no arms. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> eventually, uh, she, went, she took some of those to Paris because the French paid for part of this. And then she took uh, the rest to Jordan, to Amman, where they are. And, and actually, Bob and I saw them there. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was interesting. And you got involved, if I remember correctly, early on in the, it was called the Faculty Wives Club at that point. Yeah. Uh, now called the Faculty Women's Club. Faculty Women's Club now, mm -hmm. yes. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. What kinds of things did you do when you first started out in that group? Well, first I just belonged to it and, and uh, I, I was treasurer and this and that. I never was president of it. Oh, I are. avoided that. <laughs> but um, I did a lot of work in Faculty Women's Club, and I still belong to it, mm -hmm. still exists. Right. Yes. Did you primarily do, at, back, in, at, back at that time, did you do service projects and fundraiser kinds of things? Or yeah. For the mm -hmm. campus, for the college? Yeah. No, I, I can't remember just what mm -hmm. we did. I remember the Oktoberfest for a long time, kind of a, was a public open house, wasn't I think, sort of thing in the fall. And we, I did things at the medical center, like taking people on tours. Tell me about what you did in surgery, right? Didn't you volunteer? Yeah, I sat surgery? at that desk at the, in the little office there, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, met people as they came in when they had someone in surgery. Okay and kept them happy and fed them a little and so forth. And um, also I did take people on tours. Who do you think stands out in your mind maybe as some of the greatest characters or some of the greatest figures that you remember the well, most? Well, when we came, the dean was Tolman. Oh. And he was a nice man, quiet and so forth. And his wife, Betty, was, uh, was very active and uh, a very nice person. And uh, then after Tolman came Whitson, and uh, I wasn't crazy about Whitson, but you know, he was all right with me, but his wife was a real funny lady. <laughs> and see, uh, Lottie Whitson, uh, her name was Charlotte, but they called her Lottie. Lottie, yes. And uh, she, when she drove, she never made left turns. She always only made right turns. All here, Dr. Kugel and Dr. Rigby. Yeah, well, Kugel, uh, I liked a lot. He was a pediatrician oh. and, uh, and finally left. And I've forgotten where he went now. Now, what about with Dr. Whitson was the first chancellor, yeah, and then Dr. Sparks, Bob Sparks. Yes, yeah, Sparks was very nice uh, mm -hmm. to work with and under. And uh, and who were some of your close friendships? I know you said the uh, Musselmans were the Musselmans, the Hodgsons, and Dr. The Gibbs, Paul Hodgsons, and the Gibbs, and the Gibbs, and, and uh, yeah, we were really good friends. The main ones, I guess. And I had good neighbors. Uh, yeah, you were, you kind of were in a famous neighborhood there, right? A block away yeah. from you was who, whom? Uh, at 55th and Farnham. Uh, yeah, that's a, that <laughs> Mr. was Mr. Buffett. A, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's his name up in the library? Uh, oh, da Stuart Dayton. Uh, right. Dayton's were dear friends, mm -hmm. too. So.
So what did you do? Um, Dr. Grissom retired in 1987, but he was still doing lots of things at the medical center because yeah. he was on the admissions committee for a long time. Yeah. I think he did the integrated clinical experience. And he worked experience. at the VA because, the you VA, see, right? he had to retire from the medical center at 65, I think it okay. was, but he could work at the VA. And he worked in cardiology mostly at the VA or? I don't remember. General. He had a... He had a hypertension clinic over there, too. And uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, he had had prostate cancer for a long time, and they said, oh, it'll never do anything, you know. You, you, you'll outlive it. Well, they were wrong. It mutated, and he didn't know. He had no symptoms. And on a routine x-ray, they found it in his liver and his lungs, and that meant there was no hope. So... Uh, but yeah, I know he always exercised, and he came over to the gym a lot on campus yeah. to walk and to work out. And he ran mornings. We had a dog, a wonder, our favorite dog. There's a picture of it over there with my husband. And... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, her name was Fox, and when Bob got up in the morning, he would go out of our, he, he, she was out in the bathroom between our bedroom and the study, and when he went out to the study to get dressed, he'd watch, and if she put on short, if he put on shorts, meant he was going rundy, running, and Fox would get up and go with him. If he put on long pants, She'd go back to bed, <laughs> wait till I got up. <laughs> um, yeah. And you both, well, you especially were involved when they built the Center for Successful Aging on our campus, the ger new geriatric mm. center, for some exercise uh, equipment yeah. and things there, right? Yeah, I think. I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. With Dr. Potter, Jane Potter. Oh, yeah. And you see, her husband had taken care of me, Dan Schaefer, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I had a collapsed esophagus, and he would stretch it, and it would work for a while, all right. So I have a couple more questions. Your, was, your father was a doctor, is that right? Yes, he was. And, uh, but it was in the Depression times, and uh, they moved from Stamford, Connecticut, to Springfield, Massachusetts, because he was going into business with another doctor there. Well, then the other doctor left him hanging, and he didn't have uh, hospital privileges, and it was really tough uh, for a long while for us. And my mother made most of my clothes. It was kind of funny. She bought, had a good buy on brown check gingham once. And she made me two dresses and little pants that went with them, two sets. And I'd wear one one day and one the next and get them. And the teacher thought I didn't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> Same fabric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like your school uniform, kind of, or something. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but um, so um, he had a tough time for a while. But he had one patient. Her name was Miss Rude. And we always said Miss Rude put me through college. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it helped. Uh, uh -huh. She was a steady uh, one. And, uh, Did you ever think about wanting to go to med school yourself? To medical school? No. No? No, no. Even though you're oh you were all about the mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. And were there there were there very many women at that time when you were in grad school? Very many women students in mathematics and the sciences or in the, well when I was at Wisconsin there was one more in the department with me. Yes. But eventually so. she left and I was the only one mm -hmm. then. But. Um, well, yeah, I wanted to mention also you, 
and Dr. Grissom were involved in our Friends of the Library organization yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Been good supporters of the library there. Yes. In our medical Libraries have always been important to me. When I was a child, there was one across from the junior high I went to, and they were both, both about a quarter of a mile from where I lived. And I spent a lot of time in that library. It was handy. You know, and I could go and I could read almost anything I wanted to as long as I didn't take it out. You know, I would sit on the floor and read. Or I, if it was something I could take out, I'd take it home. Yeah. 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 And for a long time, we had our medical humanities group that you, you always came to, too. You yeah. and Dr. Grissom always came to. So yeah. we're glad to have good friends of the library. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about all I can think of. Okay.